with us, uh, we have Hatem of uh, VMware, who's responsible for networking and security. You did a, a great talk here, but it was a very compressed talk. You had a lot of slides because it's a very, really complex landscape. You mm. cannot make it any mm. more simple, but you, you, you're trying to make it yeah. simple. Um, and, and you succeeded in landing the notion that if we don't make it simple, we can't do it anymore mm. because there are too many components, too many firewalls and all that. Yeah. And I was just um, wondering, um, with the people you meet, obviously, you also meet customers, large banks and whatever, how pressing is the need for them at this point to get this simplicity? Is it like here, do, do, do they can't it's, see the uh, trees be, be through the wood? Uh, it's enormous. Uh, the challenges that the customers are facing today uh, and as I mentioned, it's really the push and pull, right? I need to move as fast as possible because the business demands innovation, new applications, they're trying to compete. Uh, I need to have the ability for the applications and workloads to be anywhere in the world. Uh, and I need them highly secure because I can't afford any type of breach, attack, anything. So those three things are all forcing customers to really look very carefully at the types of technologies they have, the type of processes they use, and how they can transform their data center. So sometimes the, a lot of the people who are here, the security environment or the infrastructure, the infrastructure people are nicknamed the department of no, mm. uh, you're, you're well aware, it's not your fault, <laughs> but uh, uh, these days you need an app in a month and yeah. not in, 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 in a year or, or in two years. Um, does, did, did you feel that, that this, there's also there the uh, tension between but mm. it needs to be well secured obvious yes. well concerns and the business was really rattling on the gate if you don't do it now we'll be bankrupt yeah no is I this think a thing you it, it, absolutely it's uh, it, but one of the things that's actually been really interesting about the NSX the transformation and customers use it is, uh, is two things is that many security people for a long time have actually thought about and looked at things like zero trust and micro-segmentation. These were not things we actually invented. They've always been around. And the idea for the last 10 years is, if you could secure your infrastructure this way, make it operationally feasible to do that, this would make a lot of yeah, sense. Yeah, John was like calling in the desert yeah, exactly. six years ago, John Kinnevar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and he coined that phrase, and I think we, we, we were able to leverage a lot of that capability. So the security team sees for the first time, wait a minute, this is actually something that's feasible. They are the biggest advocates in many of our customers around doing NSX and this capability. And two, uh, historically they haven't been part of the conversation, right? So as customers move to virtualization and adding more capabilities in their data center for private cloud, many times they'll leave the security person out because the department of no is not going to help. This changes that. Is that they're actually participating first-class citizens early on in the conversation to help formulate and drive, because now security is an enabler. They can execute. Uh, One of my customers coined something very interesting to me. He said, uh, you know, why do you have brakes in a car? In case you want to slow down. No, it's, it's actually to make you go as fast as possible. <laughs> and that's really what security is fundamentally about, is it's, that you put those capabilities in to the inherent application and workload so that you can deliver the capability as fast as possible. I actually think it was Rene who told yeah. me that, that story once in a while. It's true, I can, no, I can see that. So, what's also interesting is that uh, your company comes from um, a, a startup which had a bright idea, mm. but really a single bright idea, a very bright idea, and it developed into um, a, a company which disrupted really IT in yeah. the past in the past in the past decade, all around you now. But but, but you have grown into to, to a company which handles a lot of all of our lives in the background. Mm. Uh, all around you, there are companies which have one single bright idea and try to try to make it uh, bigger. Um, do you feel a lot of? In the company, do you constantly feel the, the breath of people <laughs> behind you making the single backs the next big idea? And how do, how do you handle with that innovation all around you while still also maintaining your customer base, keep them happy, make them airline tickets flow, uh, what have you Yeah, not? I mean, it, uh, absolutely. I think the, the point you're raising is very important. Uh, we continue to be extraordinarily innovative. If you were at VMworld just a few weeks ago, I mean, innovation after innovation presented and showed to the customer. But fundamentally, 
now that we've grown from a small company to a big company, we're no longer just a tool in the data center. Many customers run their entire data center on VMware technologies. Uh, they expect rock solid performance, they, and we have to deliver that capability, not just from a technology perspective, from support, services, and all those capabilities. So sometimes these things, I think they, uh, they can sometimes conflict with each other. We're evolving very quickly. I think uh, the types of technologies that customers are willing to adopt, uh, you have two different types. You've got those who are standardizing their infrastructure and they've kind of moved later in the adoption cycle. So compute virtualization, you saw today in the audience, 90%. Yeah. Uh, and then there are the early adopters who take new technologies like hybrid cloud, like uh, AirWatch from Horizon, or NSX, and they begin the journey of going exactly through what we did with compute virtualization. They'll start in the development environment, maybe a lab, and then they'll slowly begin to grow it out. Not just as the technology matures, but as they mature their process, their people, their tools to map to the new type of transformation. But fundamentally from VMware, I think what we've done a good job of is maintain a consistent story across the different types of technologies. Right. It really does come down to a software-defined data center model. Everything that I've done from compute, I extend to storage, network, and security. You manage it with a management layer. End-user computing and the work we do with Horizon is just basically a portal into the software-defined data center, and vCloud Air is just an off-prem version of the software-defined data center. Right. And that helps customers really understand where they are on the journey and how to take on that architecture. Because then really on a final note, um, you, you mentioned earlier in a, in a phone conversation that actually you were glad that sometimes there's a perceived difference between the private on-premises mm -hmm. uh, stuff and, and what's happening in the public cloud. But you really said, I'm really glad that people put stuff in AWS in Azure because it gives them a role model of, of how easy it can be and this is really the type of, of uh, experience we want people to have also in their own premises so th they will live together yeah. and but d d so do you still think it's really the public cloud gives us a, a benchmark to the IT department of how it should be? Well, I don't think this is necessarily my, my personal opinion. I think fundamentally five years ago when Amazon started to come out in the market with a rate card and they said, look, I can give you storage for this amount and I can give you compute for this amount. Every IT organization had to answer the question from the CIO, well, what are we doing? And what does it cost? <laughs> what, and how much does it cost? Um, and, and the reality five years later has come back and I think people have been surprised. Number one, optimally running your infrastructure internally is usually cheaper than running it outside on a public cloud. It's the difference between buying a car and renting it and using it every day for three years. But the experience has to be similar, right? It has to be similar. It's the same car, but I'm paying 35 or 40 euros a day to use that car versus buying it up front. So the cost can be astronomical. And I've seen many customers who've grown exponentially with public cloud have to pull the resources back in because it just became very expensive. Number two, security has forced a different type of conversation. I can't have all the data. I can't have my crown jewels as a company sitting only in a public cloud. I have to be able to leverage those infrastructure services, but at the same time maintain a security policy that stays on-prem and leverages what sits off-prem. And I think this is part of the game changer that we've been able to do with NSX, where we can actually, at VMworld, we showed the demo I talked about before, where I can have Did NSX running, and I can have virtual machines sitting on-prem, I can have them in Amazon, Azure, or vCloud Air, and I can uh, get the same security policies correlated across all three. And that's unique, because every one of those clouds actually has a very proprietary way to manage. But we've been able to actually abstract through the software model the capability of leveraging that infrastructure. You give them that ease of use, even across platforms. Give them the ease platforms. of use, but give them more importantly the security policies that are important for them to yes. manage. Well, great. Good talking to you again. Thank you very much. And uh, well, we'll, I'm sure there are some other people here who want to grab hold of well, you to get an extra explanation. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Adam. Take care.